Uh, I've been joined by uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, Nazim Burke, and uh, yeah, the rural was in a state, I think, um, in recent times. Uh, we can say that um, there are good signs on the horizon. For example, um, Germany uh, shown a big, uh, the biggest import uh, since 1950, 7.3% um, uh, more than last year, because they have been coming on. The Mercedes, uh, Benz in particular, that company, we understand they're going to um, employ an additional 2,000 um, 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 workers. I mean, that sounds good. We understand, too, that America is showing some some expansion, as uh, small as it, it might be. England, too, those uh, very important um, um, economic powers. And of course, when good things are happening there, it, it sort of uh, fizzles out into the Caribbean. Uh, you, you must be happy with those kind of news. Well, they're encouraging um, reports. You know, we, we, we can't um, begin to jump for joy at this point. I don't want to be a pessimist, but I think the experience of recent years have shown that um, you know, um, there's been stops and starts. Uh, there have been. Uh, it's been a very. It, it's been a very cautious um, um, re re reversal of the of the of the of the fortunes of these countries. Um, they've started. It looked promising, and then they dipped again. We are hoping, of course, that this would be the um, the beginning of a of a turnaround, um, a, a permanent and consistent turnaround especially in Europe and the United States, because, um, you know, these uh, constitute, uh, by and large, the, the major industrial economies of the world. Um, they have not been doing very well. Um, the world economy has been carried, essentially, by the emerging economies, um, Brazil, um, Russia, India, China, uh, South Africa, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, some of the um, some of these economies have been doing quite well and re realizing very sustainable um, growth, uh, notwithstanding the crisis. Um, but of course, as you well appreciate, our economy is more tied to the United States and the United Kingdom than it is tied to Brazil or China right. or India, for that matter. Right. And so, even though there's a lot of movement, even though there's a lot of dynamism, even though there's a lot of momentum in the emerging economies, we are not being pulled along. Um, in this economic, um, by this economic train, uh, we are we are tied to the economies that are stagnant, right, and therefore right. our economy is stagnant. So these are encouraging developments, and we are hoping that um, they 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 pursued, uh, they develop in a consistent and, and, and predictable way. We understand too that um, Grenada has not been too badly affected with all of the um, problems in the world. Um, we understand that uh, construction uh, has been doing pretty well and um, tourism mm, has been keeping us afloat and uh, things have not be gone too badly in the spice out. Well, we have said so before and, and I think you, 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 you get us a flavor of where the country is at when you see how people are responding to mass activities um, that require some expenditure, how people have responded, for example, to the, uh, the Barry's Hammond show how people have expanded, responded to the drum festival, how, how they re responded re to the Karakumaroon, next weekend. <laughs> uh, the Karakumaroon festival, right. how they'll respond to some of the other ongoing activities. Of course, I don't want to trivialize this uh, because uh, many of the people who, um, you do not get a full flavor of what is going on in the country simply by looking at who is attending shows. Right. But, um, you know, we have a lot of vehicles on the island. People are continuing to drive the vehicles and do what they have to do. Um, I think that uh, I think that things are difficult. There are families that are hurting. I, I don't want to, to to trivialize this. There are families that are hurting. Many families that uh, I've met, I've spoken to, have listened to their their concerns and their plight. And we know that um, things are difficult. At the same time, I think when you compare Grenada's situation with most of the other countries in the Caribbean, we have not been doing too badly. It is not uh, sufficient solace and, 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 and consolation to those who do not have jobs and cannot put food on the table. But we want to say that um, uh, it is true that we have not been doing uh, too badly compared to other countries. I think that the preliminary numbers that we're seeing for the first quarter of the year uh, so far, Trevor, um, would seem to suggest that um, the first quarter was not a bad quarter. We are pretty much on target. As you mentioned, construction is up. Um, uh, tourism, the numbers have increased quite significantly, in fact. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we are now putting together those final numbers for January to March. Uh, but I think we can tell you that um, the signs have been quite positive. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what we said. In the last quarter of the economy, we must remember that notwithstanding the fact that in 2010, I'm sorry, 2009, the economy shrunk by 7.7%. 7 
Last year, the overall shrinkage was only 2.4%. And in the last quarter of the year, we experienced positive growth, you see, because the, the projection was that we would have, the projection in September of last year was that the economy would have shrunk by 2.8%. The fact that it shrunk by 2.4 percent means we experience uh, positive growth that right. would have brought down the right. situation to 2.4. So the last quarter we experienced positive growth, and this quarter, uh, the first quarter of this year, the signs again have been encouraging. I mean, it's very interesting. I even I remember you at the um, budget debate, and you were saying that uh, the OCS as, as in general uh, shrunk by seven odd percent, but Grenada only shrunk by 3%. I mean, it, it, it tells you that something is happening. Right. Well, it was not so much for, for, the, OECS, for the OECS country. It was less than that. But uh, St. Lucia was the only country that did better than Grenada. Okay. And that, too, was, I think, significant because, um, you know, um, we have had more setbacks, I think it is fair to say, than most of the other countries in the last 10 years. So the fact that we were able to achieve that, I think, is some accomplishment. Don't forget that, um, you know, we've had, um, we've had the failure of Cap Bank, we've had the failure of SGL, we've had the failure of some insurance company, yeah. one or two insurance companies and credit unions. We've had the failure of British American and Clico now. We've had uh, Hurricane Ivan, we've had Hurricane Emily. All of these things within the last 10 years. And yet, uh, Grenada continues to, to show resilience, and it is testimony to the, the quality of our, and the character of our people. The way forward, uh, we've seen um, Germany, for example, even China, uh, manufacturing and exports are very, very key. Uh, we don't possess that kind of strength. Um, uh, and then we hear, hear about agriculture, a uh, big opportunity for us to, to absorb. Um, are we moving in those directions? Can we, can we move in that direction? Well, we can move in that direction, and we are moving in that direction. I believe that there's a, a lot more can be done, you know. Um, I, but, but of course, these things take time to, to, to come to fruition. We would like to see um, a lot more happening with respect to the, um, the growth and expansion of the, of, the, of the cocoa industry, of the nutmeg industry, and that is why the government has been putting quite a bit of focus on replanting, clearing the fields and replanting, because we want to be in a position to take advantage of the improved market conditions, especially with respect to cocoa. The prices have gone up significantly, and it is projected that cocoa prices will continue to go up for the next 10 years or so, um, in fact, to very high levels. So that, um, you know, we believe it is important for us to concentrate on cocoa and nutmegs and increase the expansion. We believe it is important for us to produce a lot more, uh, concentrate a lot more on the production of fresh fruits that um, can be marketed outside of Grenada. Um, you know, we're talking about some of the exotic fruits, uh, our julie mangoes, our sour sops, um, our sugar apples, are things that are needed um, by Grenadians living abroad and by people in the metropole. And so we need to find a way to tap into that uh, market. But at the same time, it is also very important for us to produce more, um, more fruits for local consumption, um, more fruits for, um, for, for the manufacture of juices and nectars here in our, in, in our own country. It is also important for us to produce uh, vegetables. As, um, as has been said time and again, and I think you realize this yourself, food security is going to be one of the major challenges uh, of mankind as we go forward. It is projected that by 2040, uh, the world will need 40% more food than is needed today in order to survive. And, um, you know, uh, this it, so? because so of the expansion in population, um, which we understand will reach uh, close to 9 billion uh, in the next 40 years, but also because, um, you know, with growing incomes in countries like India and, and China, large economies who are doing very well, income levels are rising, people's uh, ability to spend and, and to buy um, more and better food um, is also increasing. So uh, there is a, a growing demand for food in the world. You wonder, um, taking Korea, for example, um the secret is small, right? But you, you travel around and there's so much land um, not being put into into proper use, I would say. And you're wondering whether or not this is a pattern that goes right around the world in terms of um, making, putting the land into production, making things happen. Well, again, it is a challenge, I think, for m the majority of countries. 
getting um, especially more arable land get, into production. Getting more arable land into production. Yeah. The challenge is not the land per se. The challenge is perhaps more water. Water is more of a problem than land when it comes to food production. Uh, but here in Grenada, I think it is safe to say we have um, arable land and, and, and fertile land. We have water. We have um, sunshine. We have all the basic ingredients to produce food. And therefore, um, you know, we do not have the, the, the flat and, 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 and undulating sort of terrain that you need, really, for some crops uh, to grow them on a large scale. But I still believe that, um, you know, our people have shown a capacity to produce, uh, to use the soil and to produce food in, in, in some of the most, uh, what are seen as the most threatening and most difficult, uh, more difficult um, uh, terrain. So we can, we can grow food in the mountains. We've done it before. Yes, and do it. Um, I think it is absolutely important for us to recognize as a country uh, the critical importance for us to increase food production. Mr. Minister, as we seek to move forward and, um, you know, uh, any projects on the, on, on the pipeline on the horizon, um, the, the, the saying that uh, maybe a project, two or even three projects, three major projects, would really set Grenada on a footing. Um, I believe it will. I mean, I, I, I sort of mentioning that to you before. I, I believe that what we need now, I mean, the, 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 the basic bread and butter issues are being maintained, yes? And we are managing to do so uh, without dropping the ball. Uh, basic salaries are paid, uh, basic medicines are provided in the hospital, basic things are being done. Um, at the same time, you need a lot more to energize the economy and to, and to, and to do so. I think uh, two or three really big projects uh, would, make that, would have that kind of impact. Of course, the fisheries project in Guav is going forward, but that by itself will not create the kind of economic momentum that uh, we um, spoke about. One, um, how is that proceeding given the situation with Japan? Well, the last information that we had was that it was proceeding well. I'm not aware of any setbacks as a result of the situation in Japan, but frankly, I've not had a report within the last uh, week or two on it. So I, I don't know that there's any difficulty uh, in that regard, but it's something that we need to keep in mind yeah. because, of course, uh, we all know Japan has gone through a very, very uh, difficult period and it has disrupted um, all aspects of economic life. And you, you, you must be heartened. I mean, uh, the world must be heartened when they, you look at uh, the northeastern um, province in, in Japan. Um, yesterday, the, the children went back to school for the first time. Yes, which is and very, that is touching, very you know? touching yeah, and yeah. very heartening, yeah. you know. We are reminded, of course, of course, although the scale was perhaps nothing like what Japan is experiencing, I think we all in Grenada are reminded of the dislocation, the inconvenience, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the emptiness that you feel when something like this happens, you know. So, um, so that, is, that is the situation. But going back to the issue that you raised yes. earlier, um, as, I, as I was saying, uh, we need a couple of big projects to get off the ground, and that is what we're focusing on. This is why so much time and attention was given to the CCC pro uh, situation. This is why so much time and attention is still being given uh, to, the, to, the, to, to, the, to, to the Grenville uh, market project. Um, and of course, um, we continue to work with two developers, um, one in, respect, in the south in respect of the Four Seasons Hotel and one with respect to uh, the Livera project to try and get those two projects going. We are beginning to see encouraging signs in relation to those projects. I could not go into any detail at this moment. I believe that um, within the next month or so, we will have a better appreciation of um, what can happen and, and when. Uh, in respect of those projects. Uh, we also want to say that um, we are beginning to see some encouraging signs with respect to the, um, the, 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 the poultry project in St. Mark. Um, so there are a number of things that we are trying to, to, to get off the ground. I believe that I'm very hopeful for this year. I'm very, very hopeful for this year. I believe that this, this year we will see some, some positive things happen uh, before year end. And um, it has not been an easy road. Uh, we do not want to pretend that everything is rosy. It has been a challenging period. We are continuing to work, but it takes time to bring the results that we want. And I believe that if we can get two or three of these projects going, Grenada will be a better place. The Grenville Market Square, um, one would have thought that by now things would have been up and running. Yes, we, we, we thought so too. 
quite frankly. And uh, we, w we had hoped that, um, you know, we were going to be able to take this project and run with it pretty in short order once we came into government. That was not to be, largely because of some management and design problems, which were not of our own making, and, and which I think the opposition has quite dis disingenuously um, tried to suggest that it was just a failure or some kind of ineptitude on the part of this government. There were serious problems with the design. And um, we had to go back to the drawing table um, to get new, new designs or revise designs on these projects at added expense to the government of Grenada, at least, okay. I should say, at least $80,000 more um, to, to get these designs done. And at the same time, um, we had the, perhaps the fortune that as a result of this new situation, uh, two, three companies, I'm sorry, three Grenadian companies were now able to qualify, uh, pre-qualify in the bidding process. Before that, no Grenadian company had been uh, had been uh, pre-qualified, had a chance. Had a okay. chance. So, okay. so this was a very positive development for us. Um, the latest information we have is that the projects the project will will, will begin by the end of June. So um, we are we are staying we are, we are seeing course on it. We are keeping our fingers crossed. Of course, um, the Ministry of Works would be able to give us much more hands-on information as to as to um, how that is progressing. But their target dates is the end of June for the commencement of the of the abattoir. So um, I believe that um, that is something too that is very encouraging. And you know um, we have to we have to say that um, solving the unemployment problem is not uh, going to be easy, it's not going to be immediate, it's not going to be instantaneous. It's going to be a process. It is important for us to recognize that um, a lot of the people who are unemployed today um, are the young people. And the numbers are highest among the young people. Uh, the school leavers and first-time uh, job seekers are the ones who are, are facing the brunt of this problem. Uh, the people who worked as fishermen, as bus drivers, as bus conductors, as farmers, by and large, they continue to work in the crisis. So self-employment continues in the crisis. Government employees continue to work in the crisis. The problem, the build-up of the unemployment, the bottleneck really, comes from that those persons uh, who have, have left school, have joined the workforce relatively recently, and because of the crisis, we have not been able to absorb them into the into the economy and and and, and you, you know we have to look at the history of the situation in the past when um, we had visas when when there was no visa requirement to travel to Canada when people could simply have jumped on a plane yeah. and go to Canada and look for economic opportunities over there when uh, it was uh, much easier to go to the United States to find employment over there, to, to start a living and look for an economic opportunity. When it was uh, much more possible to go to Europe, especially the United Kingdom, uh, even Sweden for some, for some uh, young, young men, um, and, and, and Germany for some young men. When these things were happening, we had at least an escape valve where um, people could have found another way, another way. To, to, to find an opportunity. In this particular case, largely because of what has happened, especially the loss of uh, the, the imposition of the visa requirement, it has changed the opportunities, the opportunity paradigm for a number of our young people. And we have to blame the former administration for this. They created the reckless conditions that now put us in a position where we have very few alternatives, very few escape opportunities for our young people. So it is not enough to simply get up and say, Nazim Burke is not creating jobs for us. Unemployment is high, and Nazim is doing nothing about it. That's not the problem. And we must look at it honestly. We must look at it historically. There is a problem. We do not have some of the avenues that were available to us 10 years ago right. are no longer available to us. And Mr. Minister, I heard you on a different um, entity make a very, very important point about the CCC issue. You talked about the fact that um, the operational cost, I mean, uh, 50 or uh, every dollar, 50 or 60 cents going towards CCC. I mean, I think you need to further, um, you know, let people know about the situation in terms of the CC situation, um, operational costs uh, so, so, so tremendously high. Well, yes, I mean, it's something that we've spoken about. And I think it, it, it resonates with people because, you know, you can see it yourself that it does not make sense 
to engage in, the, in, the, in, in what is being proposed. As we said before, uh, the government um, uh, started negotiations with the CCC to, to resume this project. Um, there were a number of things that were required to be done. Government was owing CCC as much as $18.7 million from previous work that had been done. We sat down, we negotiated a payment schedule, we signed a memorandum of understanding saying, well, from now on, this is how we're going to pay. Roughly, we've agreed to pay them half a million dollars a month. We started with a $1 million payment and said we'll pay half a million dollars a month in order to, to break this down. And we were quite happy that they were prepared to work with us on that, on that basis. Um, in addition to that, it was necessary for us to sign a loan agreement with um, the Kuwaiti Fund for International uh, Development um, and, and, the, and the OPEC Fund for International Development. These are the two sources from which the monies are going to come about $52 million all told, the monies are going to come to be able to finance the development. So we signed off on those agreements, which meant that the companies, the lending agencies, were prepared to give us the money. So that problem was solved. And then we signed an agreement with the uh, consultants, the engineering firm of consultants that uh, would advise the government on the development of the project, the DWE consultants. Uh, that agreement was also signed. The only thing that was left was to now sign the contract, the fourth component, uh, the fourth precondition, if you like, was to sign that agreement between the government of Grenada um, and, uh, and CCC for the scope of works. What works they were going to do, what roads they were going to build, how long they were going to take, what the cost uh, per mile of road was going to be, how much of the monies was going to be allocated for preliminary works, and how the phases were going to be structured. In other words, the works contract, as it were. And um, I remember attending a meeting in May of last year in the, in the office of the, of, the, of, the, of the Minister for Works. And uh, I was asked to attend the meeting to discuss um, that aspect of the contract relating to the, the scope of works. And we were told then, uh, they had come in with some very high numbers. Um, I believe 19 of the $52 million was going to be used for preliminary works. This is, and when we say preliminary works, we're talking about uh, the works to put up the shed that will yeah. be used, uh, mobilization of equipment, um, um, rental of uh, accommodation for the, and for the, uh, uh, for the CCC uh, engineers and, and other workers who would come and so on, that these will have to be taken from the contract monies. The proposal is that 59.9% um, of the resources should be used for that purpose. And uh, we have said absolutely it no to that. doesn't make any sense. It does not make sense. If you borrow money to build a house, Trevor, you borrow $100,000 to build a house, you hire the contractor to build a house, the contractor says to you, um, I'm going to use 60000 of that. You borrow 100000 I'm going to use 60,000 of that to do my preliminary works, build a shed, arrange insurance, get my men on the site, and so on. And I'll use 40,000 of that to build the house for you. <laughs> yeah. And when the house is finished, you borrow 100,000, yeah. you get $40,000 worth of work, and then you, you, you're still paying back the loan for $100,000. Yeah. No that money. would make no sense to you at all. No sense. So um, that is what I think that's said. very, very important. Uh, I got that point. But no, yeah, it, 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 makes, no point sense. it makes no sense. You it know. makes no sense. And so, um, you know, what is unfortunate is that the CCC, uh, rather than uh, seeking to uh, engage in a very open and accommodating way, um, you know, their stance has been quite belligerent. And, um, you know, what we have heard from the last letter that they've written, in fact, that I saw from the third Minister of Works, their position is, we will not reduce it. If anything, we will increase it. So uh, we are now exploring uh, one or two final options. Um, uh, you know, we, of course, our desire is to find an amicable solution. Mm -hmm. um, we are now exploring one or two final options, and then we will determine what, what will be the next steps. Um, how would you like to reach out to the workers who are looking forward for you breaking ground somewhere as, as quickly as possible to give them some measure of hope, you know? Well, what we will say to the workers is we want to give you hope, but we want to give you real hope. We don't want to give you false hope. And we don't want to put you in a position where um, you, we, we take $100, get $40,000, $100,000, get $40,000 work of it. You get three weeks of work, and then everybody is flat on their face. Well, we must act more responsibly. We must act more sustainably. So we say to you, be patient. We will find a solution, and we will put Grenada back to work before it's very long. And certainly, uh, Minister, I'd like to take our hats off to 
to the government uh, for the, the gas support you, you um, implemented recently. How much is that costing you? And certainly, I think it, it's a wonderful idea, well, a really good move. Yes, we think it was necessary, you know, because we were very mindful that um, the prices of, of the price of fuel was escalating at a very significant rate. And uh, we were very concerned, especially for um, small, um, especially for poorer families, more vulnerable families who depend on the cooking gas as a basic and who have watched uh, that price go up from $31 to $52, yeah. um, almost a 60% increase over the last year or so. And of course, we wanted to ensure that this does not continue unchecked. So we thought that um, we should find a way to target those persons. Not everybody uses uh, the 20-pound the, 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 the cylinder. There are those who use the 100-pound cylinder. I use the 100-pound cylinder myself. But there are those who argued, well, look, if you're giving it to the 20-pound cylinder user, you should give it to us as well. It is only fair. Right. We say that um, it is equitable to give to the most needy. And uh, we target, uh, we want to assist, but it must be targeted assistance. Um, and we wanted to ensure that uh, the majority of families who use uh, the 20 pound cylinder would have gotten a break. And that is what we sought to do. We've taken off about $8 on the price. Government is absorbing that. In our estimation, the overall e economic impact on government's finances would be about $200,000 a month for that and about $500,000 a month for the, for the gas price, which we have, government is absorbing 50 cents per gallon on the prices. So uh, that is as good as we could have taken it in the situation. And we've said before, um, you know, we can't perform miracles in this period. What we are trying to do is keep the ship steady, make sure that um, the most vulnerable are protected, do not fall through into a deep dark hole, uh, create the little jobs where we can, and continue to work on a few big projects in the hope that they will break soon. And we are confident, we are confident, Trevor, that if we continue to do what we are doing, um, things will work out in the end for Grenada. Stabilizing the, 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 the prices for the school children to the bus. The buses. That was also very important yeah, very because, important. of course, as you would imagine, when the prices go up, the bus drivers are going to say, well, you know, we still have our expenses. Mm -hmm. We still have to pay for our buses, pay the bank for our buses. If the price of fuel goes up, it becomes more difficult to meet our expenses. Therefore, we want an increase in transportation costs. We wanted to avoid that and to ensure that young people can get to school without having to um, find additional uh, resources. And that's Certainly, I'll uh, have you. <laughs> I'm taxing you this morning. And uh, finally, I would say the VAT. How is the VAT going? How has it gone? The VAT has been working well, uh, by and large. I think um, I do not have the numbers for the last uh, two months, um, you know. Um, but as I said to you before, on the revenue side, um, I don't have a breakdown for the VAT, but overall, our revenues have gone well uh, for the year so far. And, um, you know, People are still complying with the VAT, and we, we are happy about that. We have sought... It has as reached um, right across the board? Right across the board. You know, uh, you may recall that, um, you know, last year we did a number of administrative changes before we could have changed the law, a number of administrative changes to ensure that um, people who... Um, things that... Um, would have put people in a better position, give them some breaks on many critical things. We did not want to wait until we changed the law, and we did not want to be changing the law too often and too frequently. Um, so we waited until um, the budget of, of the last budget that we read, and all of the changes, administrative uh, changes that we had conceived of and implemented, we put those into law. So I think that now um, the, the, the law itself has been put on a predictable track. People know what to expect. Um, as you know, in the budget, we extended several of the um, uh, several of the breaks that we had given to different um, interest groups, and uh, all in all, we would say that the economy is on an even, steady keel at the moment. We, we need a boost. We need some dynamism. We need to continue to push for a couple of the big projects. But for the time being, we are holding our own. Sounds good, Mr. Minister. Thank and, uh, you very hopefully, much. Uh, once we keep the the hard work and dedication going, I think. Um, uh, we just might um, get that big injection, like you said, maybe one or two of those projects. Um, hopefully, um, you can resolve the situation with CCC or, or get to some other company as quickly as possible. And um, the Grenville Market Square, that yes. is a big project. That's uh, once an important that project. gets going, yes. Yes. I think um, we get a sort of an injection we need to maybe 2% uh, at the end of the year. Uh, yes, let us see. 
that. Thank you so the much. The projection is 2%. Yes. Right. So, so let us speaking see. there to uh, Finance Minister the Honorable Nassim Burke, you heard about the uh, financial situation in Grenada, in the world. And you also heard that uh, Grenada not doing so badly. Lots of plans to surely take the country forward. And we do hope that good things happen in the future.